Hello, gals and pals. Welcome to another episode of Cocktail Hour from, I can't say the bunker, although we probably all are in our bunkers. Um, yeah. <laughs> from isolation. <laughs> so, welcome. Thank you for being here. We got our intrepid co hosts. <laughs> Hi. Howdy. Yeah, you know who they are. I don't have yeah. to introduce them. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I don't know how long you guys have been in isolation, but I think I was, I want to say the next to last week of March, I've been in my house. How about you guys? I live here. I work here. I'm always here. <laughs> I yeah, think, I work uh, from home too. So yeah. the only thing that's different is that now I am not the only person who works from home. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And I think uh, my wife and son were confined to home the week that starting the week that uh, that we did our last show. So the yeah. <clears throat> the second or third week in in March. I mean, and honestly, I can't tell time anymore because every day is like an eternity. <laughs> um, this. This feels a lot like, um, with the, the COVID-19 thing, feels a lot like when Deepwater Horizon blew and every day you would turn on the news and just watch oil spilling into the Gulf of Mexico. And it was just soul crushing to know that there was nothing that you could do about it. Mm -hmm. um, so this feels like that, but so, so much worse. So much worse. Well, you know, as... As my father would say, it's just the fucking flu. So, would he say that? Yes, he has. That's what he said. <laughs> That's that what was a direct. He says. Oh wow! Wow. Yeah. You know, it's different when you know you really can't go anywhere unless you absolutely have to, trying to keep yourself safe and other people, right? Yeah. So it's a completely different state of mind than if you're normally work from home or you're a homebody, knowing that you can't do something makes you want to do something. So it, it just, you know, it just gives you that edge that you normally wouldn't have being at home, I think. Um, maybe, I don't know. I think I'm really fortunate that I am just so slothful that <laughs> like, I'm okay with it. Personally, I'm okay with it. Oh, that's um, but yeah, I mean, the like days feel like weeks and sometimes it's just emotionally exhausting. So at this juncture, not having spoken to you guys any more about the book, I have no idea if either of you even really read it. <laughs> get to that or if we're just gonna talk about if we're just gonna like shoot the shit or... no no, no. We'll, we'll get to that we'll get to that i promise <clears throat> okay okay yeah. <laughs> uh just we just had to i kind of had to unload that oh my god this isolation thing you know i mean i had to ask um alexa the other day what the hell day was it because right? i just didn't even know what the hell day it was i'm like is it wednesday is it thursday they're all I the can't same remember. yeah they're all the same yeah. they are yeah, yeah. So, and I'm only me in my house with the dust bunnies. You know, I know that there are people out there with kids in the house and they really can't go anywhere. Maybe out in the yard, maybe if they have a fenced in backyard. You know, if you live in an apartment complex, you're yeah. kind of all, you know, in with each other with no going out. And I can only imagine how mm -hmm. much that must suck on so many levels. Yeah. I'm super glad that I don't have <laughs> that I don't have young kids because oh my God. the dogs and the cat drive me absolutely <laughs> up the wall um, on a daily basis now because there are other people here. They're used to, you know, we had our routine. Yeah. We had a very solid routine. They nap most of the day. It's fine. But now there's activity happening in the house and there's, there's, they're getting better. But um, like I have to drag my kid out of his room on any given day anyway so mm -hmm. you know this hasn't been uh i have to actually force him to go outside and like just stand in the yard well oh. you got a nice big yard yeah we do but even just getting him to go outside or leave his room is uh <laughs> but he's 
think he's almost 16. That's what he does. So that's what they do. Yes, yeah. they do. So really, that part of it hasn't really changed. Um, but we we did have a rough a rough couple of weeks just because even though he stays mostly in his room and like his girlfriend uh, is in Florida, so he's used to communicating online with with that. But even just going to school and having some face-to-face -face interaction with his friends, not having that really took a toll on his mental I health bet. Yeah. In the last couple of weeks. So we had to make some adjustments and come up with some new strategies. And he's been better the last few days since we did that. But I mean, this good. is all new. I don't know what to, I hadn't really even thought about that. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I mean. Wow. Well, you we'll know, that, through it. that makes me, uh, wonder what other folks are doing to change it up. Um, you know, how are they coping with the isolation or being sequestered in their houses? You know, what are they doing for entertainment? How are they keeping their spirits light? Are they drinking spirits? I'd like to know these things. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So this has been, this, this has been the biggest challenge <laughs> to my sobriety. I bet. I bet. But, so uh, <laughs> those of you that are listening, watching, no, we're only watching now watching and listening. We're not doing the conversion anymore. So put some comments below. Let us know, you know, how you guys are doing. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> I really want to know. Yeah. Um, mostly I haven't been reading at all. Um, it's this, been really hard. It has been like, all I do is I watch, I watch, um, movies, documentaries and, and like horror anthology. <laughs> Um, and play video games sometimes at the same time. Yeah. I just, you know, I just, uh, you know, because I play a lot of games where it's just you take, you do a move, whatever, and I've got the documentary or movie or whatever playing next to me. But um, <clears throat> I just don't have the, the mental capacity to, to really focus on anything that I might need to remember. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, I think it's just emotionally draining. And I think, you know, like, uh, you know, when your body goes through stress, it starts to shut down some of the tertiary functions so that it can devote energy to the things that your body needs right away. So I feel like we're all kind of going through this. Yeah, I don't have the ability to focus on that right now. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I I am a, typically I am a news watcher and I get to the point where uh, I hit my saturation point like super early in the day now and I can't yeah. watch it anymore because it sucks so bad. Um, like I keep the Johns Hopkins COVID-19 map up. It, it, it's just always in my browser while I'm working so that I can see if we're hitting any significant milestones or if something remarkable is happening and pretty much always something remarkable is happening, you know, cause ever the, the curve. We just had our biggest day. Um, <laughs> I think yesterday amid all these people protesting, like they hit our, our state Capitol yesterday, I mm -hmm. believe. Protesting. Oh, I saw that. I saw yeah. that. Uh, <clears throat> and, in and Madison. You know, yeah. If, if yeah. you're going to protest, I, I didn't watch any of it because I couldn't. Um, I haven't been able to watch. I didn't watch any news last week at all. The week before I watched in the mornings, I watched MSNBC for a while in the mornings. I can't watch in the mornings because it's Morning Joe and I want oh, to kick those people in no. the crotch. So I, I watch after Morning Joe because I oh. love Stephanie Rule. Um, she is awesome. She is. So she is I'll awesome. Watch, I, I do like her. Yeah. I'll watch for after Morning Joe until uh, Andrea Mitchell because I like to watch um, uh, Mario Cuomo's mm. or not Mario, Andrew Cuomo's Andrew, yeah. uh, uh, briefing because... <laughs> It's what you, it's, I feel like it's what I need to remember that government actually can work. Um, so I'll watch him, but I cannot stand Andrea Mitchell. Me either. She talks like she has, like she's had some brain damage. Like she just can't seem to formulate Damn. the words she 
aunts and she, there's these pauses while she's trying to like it's right on the tip of my tongue and then chuck todd is the, a demon i just cannot stand oh yeah agree even just watching him i i don't i don't see how anybody can watch him is he <laughs> under rage does it it is it, there's something about his face and the way he forms his words that <laughs> so like when the meet the press music comes on now and uh, I don't know what that classical music piece is but now I have like a visceral reaction when I hear like the, just the, the opening measures of bup, 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 but I'm like screaming yeah, nope. for the remote because I can't I cannot it's gotta go oh wow yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's so, pretty bad. I'll, I'll yeah. check Twitter, and but my max is like two minutes a day, because I go to look at just <laughs> um, like headlines or you know stuff like that. And as yeah. soon as I see the first shitty thing, I got it. I'm done. I yeah. can't take it. As soon yeah. as you see something about injecting disinfectant <laughs> into your oh, body, God. seriously? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I just uh, the memes have been pretty good though. They've been flying around Facebook. I got to say. Yeah. yeah, I haven't. And I went on Facebook for the first time yesterday, and I was there for like, I don't know, thirty seconds. I liked something that Colette posted, and then I was like, okay, I'm all done now. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah, it's just hard. <clears throat> it it's, is hard. It's hard to compartmentalize, and it's like you want to find something that's going to be fun that can sort of take your attention away from the um, sucking chest wound that is our economy and our healthcare system and our, and our current uh, administration that's like, you know, everybody, it's going to be fine. Everybody just go ahead and, you know, go out and shop and go to the barber shop and see a movie in a theater and... Let's go to Vegas. No, don't get me started with that one. Did you see her? I did, I did, I did. What's wrong with her? Oh, I mean... I'll tell you this, though. She looks good for 81. She was 81? Yes. Is she really 81? Yes. She didn't look 81, for sure. All right, I... well, that is still no excuse. Well, no, not when she's representing the damn city. <laughs> We we asked to be the control group. We want oh, the placebo. Oh, my God. And, no, and but... It's like, you... Do you understand what you're saying? <laughs> then she's like, I didn't say that. I said, I said exactly that. <laughs> I know. What? I mean, it's possible if she's 81, it's possible that maybe she is in cognitive decline and someone just needs to pull her aside and be like, you should probably sit down now. Yeah, I feel like that's the general state of, uh, of the politicians. Right yeah, now. like uh, here, we're gonna turn on R next to their name. Although she's an independent, but um Oh okay. sure she is. Sure she is. Yeah. Like here, we're gonna turn on murder she wrote and you just stay here. <laughs> we'll get somebody with a functioning brain to go ahead and run your city. I have a question for you, Colette. Were you waiting for her to say something like, I have an infection? <laughs> <laughs> no, no the, I mean, that didn't occur to me. Okay. Because, um, yeah, I mean, because that quote, that was a person who was not in cognitive decline, who was just under the effects of somebody else's <laughs> medication. prescription medication. <laughs> well, maybe I feel like I need to reread that now. I could do I know, that. right? It's got great. And for those of you who don't know, shame on you, number one. And number two... <laughs> You need to get Colette a uh, book. Um, don't tell me parties in Congress, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Colette Moody, parties in Congress. Get it. Ebook, paperback, whatever. It but doesn't you gotta matter. It, you got to get it and read it. It it's, is awesome. As a matter of fact, uh, our friend Carol. Did you ever send Carol that? Oh, that God, book? Carol, I'm sorry. I tried. I got locked out of my account. So I have, I've asked for <laughs> reset the password and I haven't got an email. Oh, I could do it. No, no, no. I'm going to do it. I Carol, pay less I because it's my shop. It. Mm. And then you can just PayPal me. I'll take care of it. Okay. If I remember. All right. So um, she might get two presents. Maybe. <clears throat> oh, so Carol recently read Parties in Congress again because she needed some levity. And yeah, I get that. She had <laughs> forgotten 
how how funny it was. So just uh, you know, maybe that's what we should do. Maybe we should just read Colette's books for the for the next show. Well, you know, I when I wrote that, um, I was not yet at a point where I thought that an entire party was completely morally bankrupt and would let people die. Yeah. Um, so I'd just like to think back fondly at those days before I realized how horrible and cynical all the Republicans are. Not even let. I would just like to clarify that it's not even just let people die, but to openly advocate to killing people in order to assist the economy. Yeah. yeah. It's not even just letting people. It's openly saying you know, you should want to do this. It's patriotic. And then just walking back on it when you get some flack. Oh, I was just being sarcastic or, you know. Oh, I saw people advocating for it last week. Yeah, yeah. Or that stuff week. hasn't been walked back. No. That's, I mean, you know, and I had, uh, I posted somebody's tweet. I saw that. That where she basically said, you know, this isn't about saving the economy. They want to open the government because they they want to open the economy because they want to save capitalism. That's right. I agree because wholeheartedly. If they really set about assisting the people who need assistance the way that they need to be mm -hmm. to keep people from dying, mm -hmm. we would never go back. Yeah. Yep. Nobody would want to go. Well, there would be some that want to go back to capitalism, but. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, and uh, capitalism <laughs> as a portion of your government, I think, is absolutely fine. Mm. Um, but when we're going to let people die for capitalism and when we're going to jump up and down and say fully funding schools is socialism and building roads is socialism and making sure that people don't die because they don't have health care is somehow communism. I mean, there's a problem. There's yeah. a problem. Yeah, yeah, I don't disagree. I mean, this has been, it's been like that. People dying for, uh, you know, for the sake of, of capitalism it has been, I mean, I work for an HMO. I sit in on appeal panels I have for years. Um, and I have to say for, for our, our part of it, um, I'm actually really proud of the work that we do. Oh, um, good. Uh, as far as like, I, I get to, be, I get to work with um, case managers and social workers and, and our advocates and stuff like that who work directly with our members. And these people are some of the most caring. Um, I mean, they just, they work so hard to help people. Oh, that's and, awesome. And it just doesn't, it, it's never too much. Um, oh, you wow. Know? It's, it's incredible, and I feel really proud to be a part of that. And the company that I work for, we actually do spend, like, our profits for our part of it. Mm -hmm. We make, we're constantly, like, you know, our, sometimes we usually get bonuses. We haven't gotten a bonus we, because we're, we don't make any money. I mean, I work for the Medicaid area, so, you know, we work with poor people, and, um, I don't know. I'm just proud of the stuff that we do. And I know that, you know, commercial is a total another, another area of the yeah. business. That I don't really know anything about, but um, it's not, it's not all sunshines and rainbows, but mm. we do do some stuff that, that makes me feel good, you know? That's, that's awesome. um, but, but, you know, I think that even if, even if we go to universal healthcare, um, the government isn't going to run that. It's still, there's still, I don't see how there could not be HMOs involved. If you go Medicare or Medicaid for all, mm -hmm. the, the HMOs are still going to be involved in that because we have all the experience in doing that. We already do it for all the states. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. Well, there's, there are no easy answers and there's no, no perfect solution. Um, but yeah. what we have right now is broken and horrible and can't be sustained, I don't think. No. I no. mean, this this whole pandemic has really shined a spotlight on the particular things that are horrifically broken. Yes. yes. Right? I mean, people have known that they were broken for decades, but yeah. now that we really take a look 
at having employer sponsored health care mm-hmm. now that how many people have lost their job? Yeah. 28. Yeah, it's a pretty a big billion. billion. <laughs> Everybody is unemployed except for, you know, us. Essentially. Right. right. <laughs> um, Are you unemployed right now? No, no, no. I'm still yeah. employed. I'm, yeah. I'm, my, I'm still employed. Yes. Yeah. I work for a bank. So, you know. Yeah. And my wife works for uh, a company that uh, does mobile banking apps and, you know, stuff like that. So right now, you know, yeah. that's she's but, super busy. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to I have to say I've worked for many, many, many banks over the years. And uh, this is the first one that <clears throat> I'm pretty chuffed. Um, they're really stepping up to um, help the communities. And uh, we've been doing things in my division that I have never seen before helping clients. So I got I to gotta say, you know, you work for a, a good organization when, when they are primarily focused on the employees and the clients. And I kid you not, I've never seen anything like it. And I'm really proud to work there. But I don't want to say the company I'm working for, but I'm pretty proud of them. Yeah, that's awesome. I think you see a lot of, I mean, like... I've been thinking about you a lot, Colette, because uh, Amazon has been such a massive shit bag to their employees. And I haven't, I've stopped doing, I do all my grocery shopping now uh, locally um, because they're treating their employees the way they should. Mm. Um, And they've made it so easy that all I have to do is, um, I mean, it takes a few days to get my stuff, but I just go in and pick up, you know, they do, they bring everything out to the car. So, um, yeah, I've had to, it's really made me think, uh, where I'm buying my stuff again. I mean, I know that Jeff Bezos is a massive hunk of shit, um, who didn't used to be, I don't think, but, um, mm. uh, uh, he certainly is now. So isn't, isn't he the richest man in the world? Tech, isn't he? I believe he is. Yeah, he, and he has made m- millions and millions of dollars off of this pandemic. You think you that? I mean, he could be such a force for good, and it's just such a shame. He could, and what I a mean, wasted all opportunity. He, all he needs to do is compensate the people who work for him, who yep. really are on the front line of this, right? Everybody oh, yeah. is relying on Amazon and Amazon <clears throat> Prime, you know. Yeah. And I, I don't know that they're getting anything. Like these are people who have I been think- forced to pee in jars because they don't have enough time to leave the front line and walk, I don't know, however many football fields to get to the restroom and get back in time. Oh my God, that's horrible. Right? That's a I, thing. I, what? That's a thing that happens in Amazon warehouses. I could find you the link and paste Oh, please don't. Want. That's enough for me. I but can't I mean, do it. They, uh. I mean, it's just a, a morass of human rights violations. They treat their people like chattel. And to know that those are the people who are, you know, it, it is, it is disturbing that these people who, you know, have been fighting for an increase in the minimum wage for what, since Clinton was, when's the last time we had an increase in the minimum wage? It's like seven and a quarter still, right? No, I think it's more than that. I think there was one under Obama. Yeah, but it depends on when you're in. What what so. if you're like a wait staff? Is it there's a skit there's a separation of what minimum wage is. Like it's oh shit. I had to look this up a couple of years ago and I don't even remember yeah, what I if, read. So if you are somebody who gets tips, yeah, it's like two bucks and something an hour. It's yeah. horrific. Uh <laughs> but the federal minimum wage, seven and a quarter. God damn. Yeah, now some states have taken it upon themselves to go ahead and increase it. Um, And I think some cities within those states have gone even further. But, yeah, let's see when we last had an increase. I promise, folks, we will get to talk to the bo- about the book shortly. We, we will, we will. <laughs> but actually, I think it's sure? the first time we've talked to each other since the last show. And, you know, yeah. it's changed since then. So, you know, we got to kind of catch up. <laughs> okay, so bu- 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 bu. history of minimum wage law. 
Oh, look, I've landed on Wikipedia. Oh, your favorite. Well, it's your favorite, really. Oh, are you having on. a hot flash? Shine. What? Well, yeah, we'll call it that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just sweating. I got too many clothes on. Well, you can take your right. pants off. I'm gonna Cause... Have, you know what? I'm going to keep talking. I'm taking my pants off. Oh, my God. Wait, we can see you. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I'm down to my underwear. I ain't showing nothing I wouldn't show my mama. Okay. We're not all your mama, though. It's underwear. It's all right. You'll, be, you'll make it. My hair is almost as long as yours now. I haven't cut my hair in about three weeks. So almost you, are you <laughs> cutting it yourself? I have been for almost two years. Really? Yeah. yeah. My uh, hair, my hairdresser, it's a long, sad story, but she wound up having to retire early because of vision issues. And yeah, that's just, something you don't want in your hairdresser. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I've been going to her for 30 years and then, then boop, nothing. And I'm like, oh, shit. So I got the clippers out. I'm like, well, I got short hair anyway. Fuck it. I'll just keep trying. I'll try this and try that, and some things did well, some things didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the last federal minimum wage increase, was 2009. Oh, that's oh, bad. Oh. oh, that's awful. So that was under Obama. Uh, Thanks, Obama. Yeah. <laughs> I miss having a president that wasn't a fucking idiot. I know. Mm. I know. I think that's why, it, that's why it's so good for me to watch... Um, Cuomo. Yeah. You know, it's I mean, just... he's not, he, he is not perfect though. By no, any stretch but he of the sounds intelligent and like he, well, has yeah, to compared and he explains to... things. That's all I care about at this point. I want, I, get you. I, I just want uh, somebody who doesn't tell me to inject bleach or wait for the sun to come out or, or light bulb up your ass light in my body somehow. <laughs> I, I just, um, well, let's try not to. Well, and then come back a, like a full twenty four hours later when challenged, and be like, "I was, I, uh, I, was I did it to see if you moron media <laughs> people would take off with that." Was like, like, the oh. way that he said it, the, his denial though, even his denial was stupid because it was like I was making a sarcastical. <laughs> 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 Okay, well, thanks for the explanation. That that clears it all up. Mm. I feel like I want thanks, to use Bobo. that. Thanks, Bobo. Okay, you should. I was making a sarcastical. I was making a sarcastical. <laughs> it's your <laughs> dumbass fault for listening to me. <laughs> yeah. Who knew? Who knew? And you, you know, you know one, of, one of the things that we go that we do, I think, uh, some of us anyway, is to compensate for the craziness by having a delicious cocktail right all right <laughs> so on that on that score Legit. let's talk about what we're drinking ha ha uh, okay time what, to what, move it on what right. it's oh, been a half an hour <laughs> <laughs> what, what, we're uh-huh. halfway done with the show it's That's okay. Right. It's okay. let's get started i'll go first okay, okay. i'm drinking delicious orange flavored water in my palm beach it is blurry. It is blurry. Because it's part of your blurred background, I think. Okay. Oh, okay. I can see that. Yeah. Right. I know the rest of my room is a disaster. I don't want you to see. So. It's blurry, so you're good. I, that's the whole point. Yep, ah, yep. Gotcha. Gotcha. What about you, Colette? What are you drinking? Um, I am drinking a, a ginger whiskey cocktail that Laura came up with that I get the name wrong every single time. Um, so a hot <laughs> ginger yum yum. I don't know. I don't <laughs> know what it's called. Good. Yeah, but it's it not. fun. It's not it delicious. Right. It It is delicious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So every time I go to her and I get the name wrong, she's like, really? (laughs) You can't can't try to, you can't write the name down. I feel like she's going to appreciate the ginger (laughs) yum yum. She'll like that. No, no. She'll just know that I got it wrong. I think you should just rename it then to ginger yum yum. Ginger yum yum. Fuck it. That's the name now. It's really easy to remember. Right? Yeah, it's got, um, it's got a, so it has ginger whiskey, it has regular bourbon, it wait, has. Wait, wait, stop, 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 stop. There's ginger whiskey? 
What? <laughs> yeah. Look up. Um, I think it's called Misunderstood. I think this whole conversation is misunderstood. What? Hang on. Let me make sure that I'm not just talking out of my ass. Put a light on... bulb up there. You'll be. You'll feel better. Yeah, it'll cure me. <laughs> it'll <laughs> cleanse everything. And listen, you guys, my coughing and sneezing and stuff, that's allergies. Don't worry about it. Sure. But they I can't got, catch it through the my, video. My right. house cleaner hasn't been here. You could actually write a new call it novel on the amount of dust I have on the furniture. It's ridiculous. This, also, I just want to point out that beautiful framed poster back there, too. Which one? The Seduction of Moxie? Hell yeah. That's the one. Isn't that awesome? You guys see it? That's got to be I like my favorite thing ever. It's pretty cool. I know. It's autographed, too. <laughs> All right. I just sent you the link. I see it. Mm -hmm. All right. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to say I'm not. I mean, you don't like Domaine de Canton, right? Which is a no, ginger I liqueur. Do. I do. You, With the scotch, it's delicious. I thought you didn't like it. No, I, I didn't do like, like it. it. No, no, no. I liked it. She didn't like it. I, I thought neither of you liked I it. I liked it. I actually oh, make it every I think she did. Well. I think neither one of us liked it the first time, but then it grew on Andy. Yeah, it did. So like, maybe um, maybe it was the specific cocktail that we made with it the first time around. But yeah, that is like one of my favorite things. And I always buy like the, <laughs> the giant the bottle that's like a two- like a two gallon it should have a handle on the side kind Man. of size um yeah so it's domaine de canton and ginger whiskey and bourbon and then i found this stuff called sweet shine it is adorable what it's, it's basically like uh, it's flavored liqueur that's made in west virginia i think they started off making limoncello because they realized that w when they went to Italy and they had like legit limoncello, mm -hmm. it's nothing like the horrible lemon bleach that is here in the States. So they started with that and they also make, they make a ginger one. So it's got some ginger sweet shine and it's yeah. good. It's good. And then it's got my favorite, um, my bourbon cherries in it. Oh, Did you I get any haven't bur got those yeah. yet. Ah, oh, damn it. I still have the link. I have it in my favorites. I just haven't ordered it yet. What oh. are you drinking? I'm drinking, what is it called? Gentleman's Soft Log? Oh, oh Gentleman's that? Soft Log? Is that what you Soft just... Law. S-C-O-F-F-L-A-W. <laughs> Scoff Law, not Scoff Soft Law. law. I don't know. I'm not a New Englander. <laughs> Sounds like a New Englander that's, thing. That's a pop law. <laughs> All right. Oh, ha, ha. <laughs> All right. So what it has. You broke Colette. I hope you're happy. I know, right? That takes a lot of doing. Um, it's got bourbon, lemon juice, peach liqueur, which I used peach schnapps because that's all I had. Uh, I didn't have any peach wedges, so that wasn't it. That's just decoration. No anyway. peaches. No peaches. No peaches. And peppercorns. I was so wondering what's got, at the bottom. No, yeah, so it just so doesn't have whole? the... I didn't have whole peppercorns. I had to use a damn pepper grater thing I got. It's still delicious. Don't give me stuff. Don't give but me shit. I mean, so it was, so it was supposed to have whole peppercorns in it? Yeah, you're supposed and to muddle it. Shake it or... Oh, you muddle it. Interesting. Muddle, yeah, hold on a minute. Yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, once I got to peach, I yeah. stopped reading. So oh, I don't know any of the rest. Yeah, muddy, because muddy. even if I liked the taste of peach, which I no longer do, um, what, what I was telling Andy is that it um, it has a fur on it. Yes, it's the fur. So it's it's delicious. Almost like um, ah. already turned. <laughs> right, it's already been in the back of the fridge oh God, so long that it has. I just can't get past it. Uh, and it's right. funny because my mom doesn't eat peaches either. And she told me the story. And it's uh, it's different than I drank too much peach liqueur and vomited. Hers was, uh, she was a kid and she got in a rowboat with her dad. And they were going to go across the lake. And he's like, here, I have a peach. <laughs> so she has this memory of being in this 
horrible rocking boat. Oh, and eating God, a peach. eating a She's peach. like, I can't eat peaches now. So she was seasick because she'd yeah. not been in a boat before, and then she had peaches on. Oh, yeah, that will scar your ass from life. Yep. She will show. not eat a peach. And I'm oh, like, show. oh, me either, but it's different. And then I, I don't <laughs> tell her why. She's just like, oh, okay. Oh, that's funny. Your mom must be a hoot. She is a hoot. Some of the stories we hear, and, you know, some of them are here on the show. We hear them, you know, off the show, off the show. But, yeah, your mom sounds like a hoot. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, our reading assignment, which we picked, you know, pre-pandemic, uh, is this, uh, The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. And I have to tell you, um, the summary that we all read was super appealing. It's like, wow, this is a really interesting premise. We're going to love this or we're going to hate it, but it's going to be interesting. There's going to be no doubt, right? So then the pandemic hit and all hell broke loose. And I can't speak for my co-host, but I can tell you that the, the stress of, you know, trying to help folks at work um, or through work and then at home trying to deal with family issues the stress has been ridiculously crazy. I can barely function outside of work. I mean, it's true. I just, boom, just shut down. I tried several times to read this, listen to this story, but the comprehension level just went, boop, right out, right out. I mean, right, I, I would listen, I had up to nine chapters and could not tell you maybe more than a handful of words on what I read. <laughs> and it's nothing to do with the story. And what little I can remember of what I read, it sounded like it was going to be really awesome. And it really hurts me that I could not finish this story. And it has nothing to do with the way, you know, the, 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 the subject matter, the author's uh, voice, the plot, any, it just, I could not focus. So I do apologize to everybody out there. Um, I, I did want to come to the table having read this, whether I liked it or not. <laughs> But I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't focus. I couldn't concentrate. So there's my disclaimer. So y'all know. It's, we excuse you. <laughs> I we did do? finish. Oh, did you? Oh, you did? I did I, not I, think that you were going to finish. I did. Um, and what, what got me going is that I was only on chapter four yeah, Andy when was totally Andy was on chapter along. nine, yeah, and I had to at least. Uh, but I'm get, glad you're not competitive. I am no, not, not at all. No. no. So Good. I, I listened for a little while, and I was like, okay, well, I still got a ways to go. So I cranked the speed up to one and a half, mm -hmm. and um, I actually really got into it and listened. Uh, TJ had to; she was working last night i think uh well she worked for a while so i listened for a few hours and then um i actually got really tired so i decided i was going to go upstairs and lay down and listen uh and then i started dropping off yeah so, i was just gonna say that does not sound like yeah. a good strategy so um so i listened for about an hour and then i couldn't remember things so i turned it off and just went to sleep for another hour and um, got up this morning, and I had, I think, only like four chapters left. Oh, wow. And uh, so I laid down on the couch and, <laughs> and listened for about an hour and then started falling asleep again. Oh. So I stopped it, slept until 1230, got up and started listening again, and then said hey can we record later because oh, that's why okay <laughs> yeah right. i did still finish in time but then i i went to shower and then i didn't have to feel rushed so oh, good. so i did finish it and i ended up really liking it i almost started the second book oh what? wow yeah andy wow, wow, wow. i think i think when you are in a better frame of mind yeah. i think you're gonna enjoy it i think you'll dig it I, I think so too. I do. Should we give a synopsis? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So Somebody I have, have one. Here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's the first book in in a trilogy, um, which I mean you could totally stop right now. There's no cliffhangers or anything like that, really. 
So each um, one's a standalone as far as we know? Yeah, but I mean, you can see how it feeds into the next one completely. Oh, yeah, okay. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so uh, Mary Jekyll, alone and penniless following, following her parents' death, is curious about the secrets of her father's mysterious past. One clue in particular hints that Edward Hyde, her father's former friend and a murderer, may be nearby. And there is a reward for information leading to his capture, a reward that would solve all of her immediate financial woes. But her hunt leads her to Hyde's daughter, Diana, a feral child left to the great ones. <laughs> With the assistance of Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, Mary continues her search for the elusive Hyde and soon befriends more women, all of whom have been created through terrifying experimentation. Beatrice Rappaccini, Catherine Moreau, and Justine Frankenstein. When their investigations lead them to, discover of a, to the discovery of a secret society of immoral and power-crazed scientists, the horrors of their past return. And now it is up to the monsters to finally triumph over the monstrous. That's a and great summary. Seriously. It, it, yeah, it, it does a great job. Uh, one thing I want to point out right away is I did not realize that, um, and I can see here on Goodreads, that it, it is under young adult. <clears throat> oh, I didn't know that. And hmm. as I was listening, I was thinking, you know, there's really no swearing. There's no sex. There's no uh, there's really not graphic. There's really romance. Nope. No, not really. I mean, yeah. there's uh, Mary has a crush on Sherlock Holmes, but um, yeah, but she's like twenty, and he's Sherlock Holmes. So, and, and that was one thing too. Is I kept waiting for, um, you know, is this early Sherlock Holmes or is this old man Sherlock? I don't Holmes? think so. I think it's old man Sherlock Holmes, just based on the things that they had mentioned had already happened. Okay. Okay. Right? Wait, because wait. wasn't there a question where somebody was like, "Didn't you die?" Right? I mean, wasn't there a? That it might was... have been in one of the parts where I was falling asleep. Oh, that's possible. <laughs> okay. Before we move on, which Sherlock Holmes did you guys have a mental picture of when you when he first came into the story? Basil I had none. Jeremy Be Brett. Who would you think of? I never watched any of the Sherlock Holmes movies. Yeah, or I'm going to say the books, so. Basil Rathbone, probably, because I have not seen any of the other Sherlock stuff. No, you should see Jeremy Brett. He does a really good job. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Give him a shot. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, so um, so it starts out with uh, Mary Jekyll. Her mom has just passed. Uh, she's... You know, they live in a big house, they have servants, um, and uh, she believes her father is dead, you know, the famous Dr. Jekyll. Um, and, wait a minute, uh, her dad's not dead? Wait, she oh, believes all right, all right. that her dad all right. is well, dead. Well, I mean, are you familiar with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Yeah, I've seen a lot of movies. Okay, so theoretically, they believe that Mr. Hyde killed Dr. Jekyll. Hmm. Right. So at this point, I mean, it, if you've if you've long. read if you've read the uh, Robert Louis Stevenson book, then you you kind of learn at the end that they're the same person, right? Yes, I knew but, that. But hmm. once you start reading this, you recognize that these people don't know that, right? Right. Okay. These people think that they are different You're people different. and they believe gotcha. that Hyde killed Jekyll and there is a reward for Mr. Hyde. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So, um, so at this point, um, Mary finds out that her mom's money was only her mom's money and stopped when she dies. So Mary's broke. She's got no dough has to let go of all of the servants um and uh and then um i forget what then what then happens she, she winds thinks, up finding out i i did read up to chapter nine y'all she winds up finding out that there's a bank 
oh, that right, 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 right. has been right. giving right. 100 right. pounds or something. So, one pound. pounds. So there's, there's a, yeah, there's a pound right. a month that once she starts <laughs> looking through her mother's finances, she realized that a pound a month is going to this... Um, so, the Magdalene Society. Yeah, the society that really is devoted to um, uh, re... What what is the word that I'm looking for? Rehabilitating, Rehabilitating harlots, right? Because it well, because it's near White. It's near <laughs> Whitechapel. Right, right, right. Um, oh yeah. yeah where okay. all the Ripper murders were. There's right. there's a lot of whoredom. <laughs> is that a word? A lot of horror. It is now. <laughs> right. <Hold them. laughs> um, that happens out there, and so. Sh- but um, it's it specifically states that the the pound a month is for Hyde, someone named Hyde. So she thinks she's found Mr. Hyde, and she knows that there is a hundred pound reward for his capture because he's wanted for murder. So she engages Sherlock Holmes because she wants and needs the reward money because she needs she's broke, she right? Needs some cash, right? And at a minimum, she needs to stop paying a pound a month for somebody else right Right. so they go there or she goes there with dr watson and it's there that they learn that hyde is actually the daughter of mr hyde diana hyde who who okay so i sent you i sent you a message Mm -hmm. last night saying i think diana is a rogue and anybody who plays D &D or any uh tabletop rpg i think would agree with me she um she's very dexterous right she she runs all over she's running through the rooftop she can, she's picking locks she's a thief climbing she, through windows and yeah stabbing she, people she is uh she's she is exactly she is the opposite of, i think she's 14 yeah yep she's okay. 14 so she is the opposite in pretty much every possible way uh, as her sister, Mary, who is prim and proper and, you know, been raised as a lady. And Diana's like, fuck you, I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> Except she doesn't Going say out the cursing. Word. Yeah, she does yeah. not curse. She does There's not. There's not a lot of cursing. Yeah, yeah. she yeah. eats everybody's food. She's uh, got no yes. manners whatsoever. Um, yeah, sounds like my brothers. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. So she and Mary... Mary, the the nuns are like you got to take this girl because yeah, you we need to take with her. this bitch. <laughs> she has got to she go. She needs to be out. So, right, exactly. Um, and it's yeah. Diana that tells Mary, "Oh, well, you and I are sisters." And she's like, "I don't know what you're talking about." No, <laughs> you're, yeah, Mister Hyde was Doctor Jekyll. They're the same man, and so. That's when they learn that? Yeah. Oh my god, I don't even remember that. Yeah. Yeah, Diana tells Mary that they're the same man. But and how did, how did she know that? Because her mom told her that uh that her mom was a prostitute. Yeah. That yeah. that Jekyll that Hyde was the name that Jekyll used when he didn't want to have any uh any negativity but associated. Wasn't Hyde some furry baboon kind of yeah. guy? He, he was a, a well, but how did she a know it was the same guy? Because Hyde told her. He told her. Yeah. I got the impression that Hyde didn't know. Oh, that no, he, he was. Knew. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yep. He knew. Yeah, I think this I happened think, right after you stopped. Yeah. I think the issue was that, right. So, so Jekyll is doing experiments on himself and he is turning to Hyde and then he turns back. Um, and things are, he is doing things as Mr. Hyde that he is regretting as Dr. Jekyll. And then he reaches a point where he is no longer able to control when he becomes Mr. Hyde and when he can potentially turn back, right? That's when things start to get hairy in ah! <laughs> the original story. Um, and they right. do allude to that several times in, in this, too, that uh, he just lost control. So um, the information is conveyed. There were some, some times that I did have issues with the, 
the style of the writing. Totally. Okay. Yes. So let's talk about that, yeah. right? Okay. Because this whole thing is written. All right. So ultimately we end up with a group of women, right? That all have this common factor of they were monsters or they were experimented upon yeah. Yeah. by their caretakers or their fathers, uh, who were all members of this um, society of alchemists, right? So Catherine Moreau from the island of Dr. Moreau. Who I is, think is my favorite. Is the person who is writing the book. But throughout, uh, we just have these weird meta conversations between her and people who are in the room and that really bugged the shit out of me i got used to it but i almost i almost that was one of the reasons i almost stopped yeah and yeah like i went to the to the ebook um because we all read this from script i went to the ebook to see how it was formatted in the text and how they did it was writing 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 Name in, in bold, colon, whatever that person broke in and said. So right. the, the narrator did a really good job of, of doing that. But the first few times I was like, what the hell is happening? Right, here? because people are commenting and we haven't even met them yet in the story. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I read a little bit about this and I think the author was trying to express it. These were comments of the characters in the margin of the story, right? So it's like writing in the margins. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that's what they were trying to convey. As you're, you're trying to convey. I mean, that that makes a lot of sense. The way it was, the way that that it did come out, but I didn't yeah. like it. I didn't um, either. But you guys got used to it, though, right? No, I, I, mean, I tolerated I, it. <laughs> I got, I did, I got used to it. I, I so I expected it, and and it bothered me less. But it did take me a while. And then the other thing was. Um, all the head hopping and and one of the characters actually saying i don't think you're supposed to have it where you know what's it called when you move from one person's uh point of view to another in the same scene and you know i was like well at least she knows that she's doing this and it's uh -huh. an intentional it is intentional thing. from what i read so, yeah 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 but, so yeah. so then there's so there's Catherine moreau there's Justine Frankenstein. Frankenstein. And then there is um, Beatrice Rappuccini from Rappuccini's Daughter. So Rappuccini's Daughter. No, was I the I've one never heard of this. What? That I was not familiar with, but it's by Nathaniel Hawthorne. It's not like it's by oh. some schlub that we've never heard of. Well, we've huh. heard of that schlub. I mean, we've heard, yeah, of, we've heard of that schlub. <laughs> Um, right. And so I actually had to go and look it up, but it's basically about this guy who, um, does experiments on his daughter and, and she becomes poisonous, you know, and that's by design. Which is one of the things that audience doesn't know this, but, <clears throat> um, many times we talk through discord, the three of us and Colette was trying to bring up these different characters which i didn't know well, all she of them. to you <laughs> and i kept thinking about this the only thing i could one of the few things i could remember from what i actually listened to was there was a woman who was poisonous and the only thing <laughs> the only thing my brain would soak up was uh typhoid mary you guys remember that character from what was that shitty ass movie electra with jennifer garner <laughs> Remember how the poison ivy? Yeah, uh, I didn't. Anyway. Oh, poison ivy is different. No, okay. I know, but the chick was supposed to be typhoid Mary, I think it was, and <clears throat> that's the only thing I could like. But my typhoid could... Mary was a real person. Yes, I know. I know. Okay, okay. <laughs> I know, but yeah, but once you started talking about a Jennifer Garner movie with Electra, <laughs> I was like, what? what? <laughs> And I thought maybe she was like, um, you know, her nemesis or <laughs> some that, that, bullshit. That was, that was how my brain did the association. Oh, okay. So when you said Rappuccini's daughter, I'm like, what the fuck is that? Although I didn't know what that was. So now I have to do a little more research when I can remember shit. But yeah, I gotta, I gotta find out more about that. 
So if you are a, um, if, uh, sorry, sorry, okay. Skype popped up a little thing and I didn't, I needed to read it. Um, so if you're a fan of old time, you know, old school horror, like there are so. Yeah, like Victorian there are so many, era horror. Yeah. Um, so we, we have, you know, Dr. Moreau's Island, the story of Frankenstein, and they talk a lot about Mary Shelley. Mm -hmm. uh, and her book in there, which I thought was really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, obviously, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Sherlock Holmes. Um, and Don't forget Dracula. Uh, mm. What? Dracula. Dracula. And Dracula, because yeah. Because so Renfield, Renfield is right? a significant character the, in this book. But, I mean, but Dracula is not. Right, but, but the very end of the book there uh she, there's more tie in because uh mary had sent a letter out to her old i don't know her old teacher or whatever uh yeah. and got a letter back finally where she says um i i can't really talk to you right now but i want you to I, a, a friend of mine needs your help so i'm forwarding her letter on to you and it is from a Miss Murray, uh, and at the, uh, or, or, or no, oh, oh, that was the name of the teacher. Her teacher, her old Nina teacher, Murray. was yes. Nina Murray. And the letter that she is forwarding is from Van Helsing's daughter. Right. So we have yet another daughter. Who was yeah, also cool. part of the Society of Alchemists. Yes. So, right. Yeah, but don't they form their own society though when all these they, women get together? Yes, they do. The Athena Club. Because I thought I remember reading that in um, it said something like Athena Club Book One or something. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at the very end. Um, sorry. Damn. That's okay. Yeah. So ultimately, this is this is kind of the origin story for how this group of women get together, and. Um, I mean, really, it's kind of a feminist novel, right? Because all of these women have been subjected to the various experiments and ministrations of these sort of crazy motherfucking dudes. Um, and I'm, I mean, it's it, I, it, so on, on the one hand, it gives you a snapshot of what it's like to be a woman in Victorian society because you have to wear this and you have to have gloves and you've got to have whatever the hell and a handkerchief and a, yeah, all of that stuff. Right. And then of course, Diana is like, I just want to wear pants and I want to have pockets. And I, you know, all, all and one of the of other stuff. ones, one of the other women, I can't remember if it was, I don't think it was Catherine. Uh, maybe it was Beatrice. One of them was big into the suffragists. And, <laughs> yeah, and Beatrice. Beatrice was. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, there's. You're absolutely right. It was a total. It was totally a feminist novel. Um, yeah. And and Mary represent Mary and Mrs. Poole, the housekeeper who refused to leave when Mary had to let all yeah, the yeah. go. Mary and Mrs. Poole kind of represent the. Um, the old. the old school exactly right? queen victoria the traditionalist one of we them wear this because you know yeah. if we this don't cool. we'll we'll look odd and this is what's proper and this is what's not proper right but then ultimately all of these women are victims of men and their strange fascination with power over life and death and dominion over animals now i mean i'm not gonna lie and say <laughs> that there wasn't some eye rolling on my part when we got to like pig people and shit <laughs> i am not a fan of the island of dr moreau <laughs> i think it's ridiculous <laughs> and um you know that movie with val kilmer just made it worse I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. 
But his wasn't the first one, though, right? No. Wasn't there no, one back but in the I 70s? I think it was definitely the worst one. What was his name? The guy in the 70s one. He was in Logan's Run, right? That was his name. Wow, I don't know. You're going to have to... Oh, I got to look it up I now. IMDB I'm that. I'm going on it right now. Right I now. I don't know. But, but if you're I, a fan of, of these stories... Um, and even if you're unfamiliar with them, like I, like Andy and I had never heard of, uh, or, or let you either, the Rappuccini's daughter, right. um, she was, I, I think the way, the way that the author put everything together, you get a lot of the story. Um, so even if you're not familiar with that, um, and it really is, uh, it's kind of a lighthearted, um, I'm not going to, romp is too... It is not a romp. Whimsical. It's not, but it's, it's too whimsical. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, they're, they move they move pretty quickly um, through these different stories. And, and, um, and because it's the first book, and they even say something about this in, in, in the book itself, you know, because it's a first book, you, you have to get to know who everybody is. That makes um, sense. I mean, and, it makes me wonder if the second book is going to be written with that same weird sort of meta conversations where somebody is describing a scene and then somebody jumps in and says, I don't think that's really what happened. That's not what I was thinking, but Whatever that's what I hell. was thinking. And yeah, right. that kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I'll let you know because I do plan to. I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to start the second one all right cool i am glad that you stuck it out and that you liked it enough that you want to read the second one i did because i was really starting to feel like i we were going to get together and i was going to be the only person who'd read this no um i think that you know we've been talking for the last several months about you know there's so much negative happening in the world right now and normally we do murder mystery serial killer <laughs> yeah we do, we, do. we do a well, lot of dark stuff this did have a lot of dead horse it, it did have a lot of dead horse yeah oh and the whole jack the ripper thing if, if you're a fan of the white yeah, castle but I mean, the white chapel it not white castle <laughs> no because if you go to a burger you're gonna get shanked but <laughs> no i mean i mean are we supposed to think that the person who was doing the white chapel murders was jack the ripper because none of those women who were in this book were ripper victims no 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 well so this is what i gathered from it okay is that um and and they do kind of address this at the end where uh, Lestrade is pissed off because they really did solve the white chapel murders but because they can't come forward and say it was these, you know, it was Frankenstein and Dr. Hyde who were doing this. Uh, they publicly have to pretend that the case is still open. But in fact, Hyde, Frankenstein, Kendrick, uh, they were, and, and the, the woman from the, uh, the magical society who was given up the names, they were, in fact, the murderers, the Whitechapel murderers. Why? Because they wanted to, uh, because they were harvesting their body parts. Yeah. Oh, prostitutes? Right. Yes. Well, so the people who were at this Magdalene Society, right? So they had a person on the inside, right? That sort of okay. bitchy chick. I don't know if you read far enough to meet her. No, I don't think so. Right. So she's running the magical society, which is for fallen women. And um, they're getting people's names from her. Okay. Names, descriptions and, and, and everything. Yeah. Right. And then I guess there was some way that those people were kicked out and put back on the streets. And then Frankenstein... And Dr. Hyde. Frankenstein's were... monster, I guess we should be more specific, right? Yeah, because yeah, Victor yeah. Frankenstein was not the monster. Um, right. He was the, the one who was killing them. Spoiler alert. Well, he wasn't killing them. Wait, wait, wait. Victor Frankenstein's monster was ki was killing the prostitutes in Whitechapel? Well, he was, a, he was arranging. So it was... Here's what happened. So Justine was created for for Adam Frankenstein. To be his mate. Wait, 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 wait. Who's Justine? 
Justine Frankenstein oh, okay. is one of the women that we meet. She ah. is traveling in this carnival, right? With, um, with, uh, with Catherine. Catherine. Yes, Moreau. right. Yeah. The woman who is a puma. Yes. From the island of Dr. Moreau. Yes. Right. So they are traveling together in this sort of traveling carnival sideshow show thing. thing. Yeah. And so um, Justine Frankenstein, she's not really a Frankenstein, but she was a, a young woman who was hanged like a hundred years before. Right. And I mean, they have Adam to had set up. They have to address the fact that Frankenstein does not happen in Victorian era times. Right. It's like a hundred years before. Mm -hmm. So. Is it? Yeah, I think all the other stuff happens right around the same time. But which, I which Frankenstein, Penny is... Dreadfuls, right? Like Dracula and, uh, but but Frankenstein happened a hundred years earlier. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I mean, I can't tell you when Mary Shelley wrote it because I don't have that in front of me. She was dead, but she was dead by the time. Uh, by the time this this these events were taking place, because they do talk about um, they do talk about uh, how how she came to write Frankenstein and how um, her mother was involved with the Society of Alchemists, right? And how she intentionally left Justine out of the story, huh. right? Right, it's sort of a feminist nod to right, so. So Victor Frankenstein creates Frankenstein. His name is from Adam. An, from an amalgam of body parts. <laughs> names, right. him, names him Adam mm -hmm. like, as the first man. Mm -hmm. And then he wants a mate. So a young woman who is hanged. Who worked is, in their household. Yeah, but that wasn't how the original Frankenstein story. She's The author here is retelling... Yes. The yes. Frankenstein mythology, but she's putting her own spin on it. Yes. Correct. Okay. Right. So okay. then he, I, it, it seems to be that Adam has a little thing for her and says, her, I want her. Mm -hmm. Right. So even mm -hmm. though Victor Frankenstein does bring her back to life, um, he does remove her uterus. Mm -hmm. because he's not <laughs> sure if if they are going to be able to like Indeed. yeah yeah to create a race of of undead. frankenstein monster undead people <clears throat> right so interesting. That's interesting the whole thing was really interesting yeah. with the different storylines yeah. and how they how they uh kind of brought all of these different women together yeah. Uh, and they, I think they, they spent enough time on each individual person that um, you got familiar with their backstory, mm -hmm. as in the, the tale that we, you know, may or may not be familiar with already, but also uh, um, that individual's uh, motivations and feelings. I mean, she, she did, uh, she did a good job of bringing these women to life and to being their own. They, you know, they all had their own individual voices and uh, characteristics. It wasn't just, um, you know, an amalgam of the same person. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. And the woman who read the audiobook had a hell of a challenge doing all of these disparate voices with all these different European accents. And mm -hmm. I think she did a great job. The, except, except for every dude that wasn't Watson or, um, or Sherlock Holmes all sounded like this. <laughs> well, you only Hyde, have so much range. Come on. Hyde sounded different, right? Because he had to have that weird, creepy, raspy voice. But most of them had a weird, creepy, raspy voice, especially a raspy. They had very raspy voices. Mm -hmm. But because I kept thinking that I don't know how she's continuing to do that voice because that would make my throat really irritated. So, but well, I, I mean, because one of the things that you learn early on when somebody describes 
hide um they say oh you know i heard his voice and it made shivers run up my spine there's something about his whispery raspy voice that yeah. is chilling hmm. um so i mean at that point right she <laughs> she has to come she has through, to right yeah oh, wow what a challenge holy crap <laughs> yeah, yeah but um i think that this was uh for, for not feeling like reading um, at all. Um, it was it was a good, light, interesting, fun read. We say light and fun. There's dead whores. There's people <laughs> who get choked to death. Yeah, but I mean, but it's pretend and it was yeah. not pretend. Pretend at all. Yeah. And I mean, it was kind of nice to see the women who had been the horrible victims of these experiments, you know, like Justine Frankenstein, who was basically created to be, you know, somebody for this monster to fuck. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. They come into their own power. I, you know, I'm really looking forward to listening to this when I get, <laughs> down the road yeah when, well, you uh, know, just two little bits at a time it's, yeah well but i think i mean once you get to the point where you kind of get into it i think you're you're gonna be good but yeah. you know what i want to see is i want to see you drink the last sip of that drink with all that pepper all right, I'm do it right now. <laughs> okay i'm ready now she's gonna have a, a whispery raspy voice it's possible wow uh, <laughs> wow. Woo. Mm. She was already sweating. Yeah, pepper. so. <laughs> Geechee pepper. Mm, mm, mm. I gotta tell you, though, that is that is a good drink. That is a good drink. Really? Gentlemen, scofflaw? What is it? Scoff <laughs> soft log? Yeah, I heard, I heard gentlemen soft log, and I almost peed my pants. <laughs> no peeing pants on the show. Come on. <laughs> All right, I'll no, wait. <laughs> later, later. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm definitely, I've got it saved in script. I am definitely going to listen to it. I just, apparently, for whatever reason, I just can't. Yeah. But from what I've heard, it sounds like something I'd really love. Because <laughs> I, I like the period piece business. I right. like, <clears throat> I like the, I love the whole, you know, Frankenstein right. and Dracula. Well, and, right? Character. I love that crap. I grew up on that shit. <clears throat> um, you got and, a nice tickle in your throat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I love the Penny Dreadfuls. Love yeah. them. As a matter of fact, I love that show on Showtime. Every, all the elements are there. Are you, the are you, um, you going to watch the new, are you watching the new Penny Dreadful? What? It, I will, but I have what? not yet. How There's many episodes do they have out now? I don't know. There's a new Penny Dreadful. I had Showtime, but I got rid yeah. of it because I wasn't uh, watching it. Yeah. Uh, but there is a new yeah. Penny Dreadful like, that takes like, place in 20th century L.A. Like L.A. Oh. Noir. Yeah. 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 yeah mm. I get the sense that it's supposed to be like Black Dahlia era yeah. oh. L.A. 30s, 40s. Yeah. Oh, that's right up yeah. your alley. Uh, yeah. I that's yeah. awesome. Yep. We um we subscribed. To, we did a trial of Shutter. Oh, how'd you like that? Well, okay. So my wife, if it's not a horror show, she's she has to be convinced to try it. You I know. So, her. um, yeah. Andy and TJ just kind of bond over these, uh, over these yeah. slasher. You know, the bloodier the better. Type, yeah. Type type thing. So um. Yeah, we like it. Um, they have a creep show series. What? So, yeah, it was really good. So you should do the do the trial and then just binge. And then there, so we watched we watched all of those. There were only six episodes, two stories per episode. It's very uh, very similar to Tales from the Crypt type okay. thing. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if you if you didn't like Tales from the Crypt, you probably won't like this. I, I don't think I was even compelled to watch one episode of that, right? That used to be on HBO, right? With the weird puppet? Uh, the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> okay, just make the it Crypt different. Keeper? Yeah. 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 So it's, it's very <laughs> except it's based off of, um, I think, most or all of them are based off of Stephen King stories because Creepshow was a Stephen King book. Um, 
Wait a minute. Creep Show was not a Stephen King book. Yes, it was. No, it was some a- of the some of the novellas were. No, 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 no. no. The the book Creep Show. It's yeah, we have it. It's right. We have it. It's um, it came out in comic. It's a comic book form. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. Really? Yep. Yep. You learn Possibly. something new every damn day, people. Yep. So um, and the movies, uh, the movies were. I think the movies. At least I know the first one. All of those stories were from him. Ah, I got you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. As a matter of fact, the movies came directly from the the book, Creepshow. Oh, I didn't know that. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Before I forget, Island of Dr. Moreau, the movie from the 70s, the principal actor, Michael York. Oh. Remember that guy, Michael York? Yeah, Michael York from Michael the... York. Um... Three Musketeers Run, movies. Three Musketeers. You're Logan's right. Run. He was in a, a movie with Marty he Feldman. Was in, he was in that stupid ass musical with Liza Minnelli that won the Academy Award. What the hell was it? Cabaret. Uh, Cabaret. Yeah. I've never seen that. I'm so delinquent. What? Them. You got to watch Cabaret. I just never Seriously. had a I watched Xanadu. All right. Oh, oh I know. Well, okay, if you're world. willing to sit through Xanadu, <laughs> so even though you get to look at Olivia Newton John, which is <laughs> a bonus, oh, <laughs> you have to be able to sit through Cabaret because Cabaret oh, has some of the oh, most God. amazing musical numbers. It's so uh, true. I can verbatim, I haven't watched that movie in 40 years, and I can verbatim sing some of those songs right now. Go ahead. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, you gotta watch that movie. Seriously, I was just singing like Fiddler on the Roof this morning. If I were a rich man, all day long, boom! Oh, wow! Oh, and by the way, I just found out recently. That Hamilton, that big smash on Broadway, yeah. is basically like a hip hop thing. I had no idea. Oh yeah, I did know that. Yeah, I did not know it. <laughs> yeah. Here's how it started. Here's how it started. <laughs> I was watching a Randy Rainbow video. <laughs> of course you were. <laughs> I, mean, I haven't listened to a Randy Rainbow video since the 2016 election because, quite frankly, I couldn't. My heart hurt too yeah. much. Uh huh. But for some reason. A couple of nights ago, I'm like, I need, I need some kind of funny, funny. I just need to escape. So, Randy Rainbow popped into my head. So I popped on his playlist on YouTube, and one of them came out with a song I'd never heard of, but it was catchy. I'm like, what the hell is this tune? I've never heard of it. And he was dressed in this 18th century garb, and I'm like, oh, I bet it's Hamilton. So I did some research, YouTube, Hamilton, you know. And there it was. It was part of the song from Hamilton. And I'm like, I had no idea it was hip hop. Nobody told me these things. Is a <laughs> People, you have to tell Andy things. I just gotta tell me these things. Now Don't I tell her. wanna see Hamilton, seriously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hamilton is awesome. Ah, I wanna see it. So bad. Mm. I mean, even if you just get the soundtrack, I yeah. mean, it's very immersive. Yeah, but I still want to see that because this is my favorite century, y'all. I love the 18th century. It's my favorite century. You have got to stop beating on that desk. <laughs> it's very loud. It's like what a cannon. Oh, goes very off. jarring. <laughs> Oops. Like I'll call that peas a little every time what? you do it. <laughs> a tiny, oh, tiny just a bit. little bit. All right, well, the show's <laughs> over. Drink's gone. All right, show's, show's over. Up, drink's gone, y'all. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Put in the comments uh, how much you enjoy your minds. Right? But let us know how you're doing on this ice, this forced isolation. We really, really want to know. And uh, if again, if you have not read Parties in Congress by Colette Moody, you need to get the book. Seriously, yeah. you will not regret it. It's awesome. It is really I- awesome. I think we should, if, if you guys are up for it, we should just do uh, a general discussion of all of Colette's books next month. Hey, I'm good. I'm good. You Let's don't see. even have to read. As many <laughs> times as I've read. I might have to. Seduction of Moxie? Are you kidding me? 
and it's been so long since I've read Seduction or uh, Original Sin that it'll be it'll be a good. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna Let's we're declaring it. it. Are you okay with that, Colin? I'm good. I'm sure. good. I am gonna have to. Um, yeah, I'll have to read them. You yeah. should. You should. They're really good, Colin. You should read. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> what right. is that guy's name? Smokey Bender. Seriously. <laughs> You guys have to learn about the bender, dude. Seriously. All right. Well, on that note, thank you all for joining us. Seriously, put in the comments how you guys are dealing with forced isolation. We'd like to know. And we'd like to know if you've uh, tried new cocktails because, you know, we like yeah. cocktails. Yeah. All what right, everybody. Do? All we right. Will, so uh, we'll let you know when uh, when the next one is. Check out the Facebook page um, for information if you want. Or just post comments here. It's all good. All right, yeah. then. Bye. Bye. Bye.